I believe that changing the way you brush your teeth can change your life. No, I'm not a dentist. As she said, I'm a death and dying educator. I encourage people to think about all of their options and come up with a plan. That plan is a gift for their family when their family wishes they were there most. Now, a lot of you probably don't think about death, and you'd prefer not to. Some of you actually probably think by talking about death, it'll come to you sooner. But I'm here to tell you that talking about death won't kill you. <laughs> most of you have no idea how you're going to die or when. And there are some really odd ways to die. Let me show you a couple uh, doozies from history. A vat of beer collapsed, and when it collapsed, it resulted in a chain reaction of all of the other vats of beer around it, which resulted in hundreds of thousands of gallons of beer spilling out into the streets of London. It even had a 15-foot high wave as it escaped from the building. Eight people died. Oddly, five of them were at a wake when it happened. <laughs> About 100 years later was the Great Molasses Flood. Residents in Boston felt the earth shake as a vessel burst and poured out 2.3 million gallons of molasses into the streets of Boston. It, yet again, oddly, was a 15-foot tall wave, and this time, it went 35 miles an hour through the streets. Molasses, 35 miles an hour. <sighs> it killed 21 people. Now, I doubt any of you think you're gonna get hit by a giant wave and die, but you might think it's possible that you could get hit by a bus. So, knowing that, knowing that you're going to die, I would encourage you to accept that and come to terms with it. Because if you, change, if you do that, it can change you. When I was in my 20s, I had an experience like this, and it changed me. I came in contact with a deadly virus, and all of the doctors were convinced that I should have that virus. So I went through the tests. First test was surprisingly negative. Second test, negative. Third test, negative. The doctors were shocked, they were incredulous, they had no idea how this was possible. So here I am though, many tests later, years later, and still am free. But that close call changed my life. I thought about my priorities, I got a new mission in life, I made promises to myself, promises I kept. So, when thinking about this, imagine if you decided what would happen and be thinking about when you might die. You might feel like you've got decades of life left, right? And I hope you do. And imagine if you really used that time. I mean, really used it. Because the truth is, you will die. And I'd like for you to think about it this way. I want us to come a little bit more in touch with that. It's something we all know is true, like Sarah mentioned, but we tend to not want to think about it. So now, I want you to say to yourself, I am going to die with me. I am going to die. Let's do it again. I am going to die. Now, as a lively death lady, I tend to be all about humor and jokes. But right now, I want to encourage you to take a deep breath. And with all seriousness, hand on your chest. Come with me. I am going to die. Good job. Knowing that, you can move forward and live a different sort of life. You can also remind yourself that every day, you are alive. It is a graceful, wonderful thing. And if you accept that, and you decide to really use that time, your life will be different. I bet you some of you out there have a bucket list. Do any of you have a bucket list? Fabulous. So a bucket list is a list of things you hope to do before you die. I would like for us to think about those bucket lists and how we can make them be even better. 
So an example of a bucket list is, I want to be a millionaire before I die. Or before I die, I want to travel the world. These are big, lofty, huge goals, right? So we can look at them differently. I'd like to shift it first this way. Instead of, I want to do this, let's shift it. I will do this. So I will travel the world. I will be a millionaire. Heck, those are still pretty big goals. So if we narrow it down even a little bit more, how about this? I will start my own business and create an opportunity to make money. Or I will travel to Brazil. These are sort of like steps to the big goals. But it's even better to get more broad and bring it back down into specifics. Heck, let's just get rid of the before I die part as well. So then it becomes, I will go to Rio de Janeiro for carnival with Sue next year. Or it turns into, I will start my business by getting a business plan together and a solid network by May. Do you see the difference? It takes the ideas out of the dream realm in the clouds and brings them into a more tangible reality. What do you want to do? Everybody's bucket list is a little bit different, right? But oftentimes they focus around travel, experiences, challenges, and community services. For my bucket list, I believe and check it out every year. So I open it up in January, I take a moment, and I pick one or two things. I put together a plan, I try to figure out how I'm going to work that for the next year. This year, I'm going to Alaska. It'll be my 50th state in my 50th year. But I didn't get to 50 as far as the states by just hoping it would happen. I had to make step by step to step to get to 50. Mm -hmm. Stephen King has a great quote, which I like a lot. It says, you needn't die happy when your time comes, but you must die satisfied that you lived your life fully from beginning to end. Now, he talks about death a lot, so I'll give him some kudos on that. The reality is, some people, it's harder. Institutionalized challenges do make it quite challenging for people to live up to these ideas and goals. Sometimes big, massive dreams can be restrictive, but even more so, if you can't see an option in front of you, or even if you do see the option, but you feel you can't get there, it's hard. This isn't something that everyone has the privilege to be able to do. Currently, you have the privilege of being alive, and one of the ways that we can help is let those that might have privileges that stop or impede them to be able to live their goals and dreams. So if you're up here, lend a hand. The goal, of course, is to shift our dreams and fantasies and bring them into reality. Now, when I think about things, I try to think of things from a positive perspective of what we want rather than what I don't want, what I need to do rather than what I don't need to do. At the same time, you just don't always have that idea and information. So every once in a while, you have to look at your life and figure out what isn't working. What is getting in the way of you living your true life? We have to shift at this point in time from a bucket list to a fuck it list. <laughs> Not that kind of fuck it list. <laughs> For this, we have to look at the things that get in our way, right? The things that madden our mind, the things that make us angry, the things that distract us and confuse us and just get in the way. You know these things, right? I know that for myself, one of the ones that was constantly annoying me is that every time I would go to my closet in the morning, it was packed full of clothes I didn't like, or they didn't fit, or they just didn't, they weren't good for my daily activity. Like really, did I need a costume into my closet? So it made me so frustrated. It made me either feel fat, but oftentimes it also made me feel late, because I was still trying to figure out what to get out of my closet. So one morning, I said, fuck it. 
and I dove in. I culled that closet, I got rid of everything I didn't like, and only things that were remaining were the things that fit and make me feel fabulous. My mornings are so much easier now. Now that's just a trivial little thing. It wouldn't seem like that big of a deal, but science has realized that really those small annoyances and those little irritations do impact our cognitive function. So while we've been talking about that part, I bet you there's something that's been going on in your head, something that does drive you a little crazy and maddens you a bit. Matter of fact, it probably made you feel a little gross just thinking about it. One of my friends said it feels like Nickelodeon slime was all over her. What could you say fuck it to? Or at least minimize its impact in your life. I want to remind you that death is 100% going to happen. And life is unreliable. We never know when things might change. Remember, one in four of us don't make it to 65. We think that death is something that only waits for the elderly, but it could happen to any one of us. Remember, there's always the bus. So, I want you to consider this. There's not that many evenings left. How many weekends do you have? And more importantly, how many summers will you get to experience? I encourage you to live your life as fully as possible and to feel each day as being alive. One of the easiest ways to do that is, yes, where we started, brushing your teeth. <laughs> Every morning, I want you to take a moment when you grab that toothbrush and think for yourself, someday I will die. I have challenges in life, but today, I am alive. And then I want you to look into that mirror and ask yourself, what am I going to do today to fully live? I want you to take a brush with death. Thanks. Thank you.